I think the code is extremely beautiful. It's actually one of the very few beautiful things uh, on that planet. It's pure poetry. It's very abstract. It's very similar to mathematics. But on the same, uh, at the same moment, it is, uh, it, it's able to, to, to tell stories. So we are able to understand a certain kind of code. So there's the, the most abstract code, the binary code, the binary one. So only zeros and ones, like two digits. Uh, and you can say everything, whatever you want, anything you want, you can say with that code. I mean, isn't that beautiful? So with just two elements, you can express all your emotions, all your... I mean, whatever you can write down, and we have a lot of literature written since, I don't know, when, and, and other artworks done, that can all be translated into the binary code. And so the binary code is like really the, 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 the ultimate code and the most beautiful one. The problem is that we humans cannot understand it. We can understand the system, the syntax, but we cannot, let's say, speak the language. It's too hard. Uh, it's almost impossible. Uh, and uh, that's why other languages, other computer languages were developed as kind of an interface, as a kind of a languages in between the binary code and our languages, the languages we speak as, as human beings. So I'm dealing with both levels, right? In that one, with that one in the middle, which is something that is partially understandable to us, and with the one, with the very abstract one, with, uh, with, the, with the, like mathematical equations, uh, okay, that are represented by the binary uh, code. So the code is actually, uh, on the other hand, it's very simple, it's very basic. The code is like the smallest elements. It's like, like atoms, like neutrons, like quarks, you know. And then these elements are like, like Lego bricks, and then you just build whatever you want out of that. But because they are so abstract, because they are just like two digits or two elements, it doesn't have to be zero, one could be whatever, plus and minus could be this and that. Because they are so abstract, uh, these elements, of course, then they allow you to put more into that container as if you are, let's say, if you are reading a book, you have characters and you have words and the language tells you exactly what the author wanted to tell you. Sure, we have fantasy, we have imagination, we can, we can construct more than what's written. Uh, but in a code, uh, I think there are even more possibilities and unlimited possibilities. The other thing that is also in my focus very much is that the binary code is something only the, the machine understands. So you can have an art piece where only machines are involved or let's say two machines can communicate using this code. And then there's no human involved. They can generate the code by themselves. They don't need a human being. They don't need a, a human touch. That's why I'm saying that art can happen in in different environments. It can happen in in a, in a human environment, of course, or or art and emotions and stories and whatever can also be present and is, of course, in machines, in devices in other kind of equipment. I strongly believe that uh, even though you, know, uh, you can call it religion, but I think it's uh, important to work on that and to be able to enable uh, art without human touch in the future. So somehow you think that computers communicating and transferring code and communicating by code have a parallel with human emotions. You could think this okay. parallel like... 
they have, they certainly have a parallel world, which then includes emotions as we understand them, of course not, but in their own way, of course. Or at least if they have their own parallel world, if they can, you know, self-generate uh, meanings, uh, uh, emotions, that's not intelligent. So they are not intelligent. We, we don't have artificial intelligence as such. But we don't need that at the moment. It will be good when we will have it, but it's not necessary now. For communication, you don't need any intelligence. You also don't need emotions as such. You need a data flow. That's what you need. A flow of data. And that's what we have. And I think that if you open uh, an optical wire, and if you would have a chance to open it at a certain point and to see and to understand everything that is going in both directions at that very moment, you would find more emotions and more okay, more emotions and more stories than if you if you go, let's say, to the huge museum gallery where everything is fixed, is not moving, is there. Uh, that's why it's easier for us to understand it. But inside this wire, it's very hard, so we feel helpless somehow. That was also at the very beginning of the internet, between 91, 94, 95. Uh, uh, Spectators, uh, users, were usually confused when they, 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 when they were faced with a, with something we called net art at that time. Mm -hmm. Confused because they didn't know how to communicate with, with that, with that thing. What to do? What to click? What to type inside? How to do it? How to, you know, what to transfer? Yes, no. So they. If, um, so this kind of a helpless situation, a kind of a handicapped situation, was also present at the very beginning of uh, internet art and of course even before in any kind of media art or electronic art, starting with, I don't, in, I don't know, 20s, 30s, 50s. Or 